Welcome back, boxing fans. So this is a common ins insult you find a lot of times when you're a Caucasian boxing fan on YouTube. People will call you a Neanderthal. They will call you a cave demon or cave dweller. And they use this as a negative thing to try to uh, disrespect and downplay you. But the funny thing is, really, they're giving you a compliment. Because Neanderthals were a dominant species during their period of time who routinely dominated and beat Homo sapiens. So this is just a little historical background that we're gonna take a, a minute to listen to and then we'll go on to it a little more. But it's just funny that people really wanna use this kind of insult towards you, which more is a reflection of themselves, right? The same people that do this are the ones that get bent out of shape thinking everyone is racist. Yet they consistently use these kind of attacks towards other people. Racial attacks, racial profiling, right? Trying to demean and downplay other people, another race. So it's kind of hypocritical, but what would you expect? A lot of the people that continuously put out these narratives, I think are just uneducated uh, and obviously, you know, must be malnourished and their brains just did not get enough nutrition for them to develop the way they should have. But let's listen. Species of humans shared the planet with us at the same time, and they were everywhere. Denisovans settled in Russia. Dorsiensis traveled all the way to Indonesia. Lucinensis traveled through Asia and all the way down to the Philippines. And of course, there's us, Homo sapiens. We evolved in Africa, then moved into the Arabian Peninsula and spread. You see what he says there? We, us. Because the remaining population of humans or humanoid on the world are all the same. We're all Homo sapiens. We all evolved from the same place. So people that want to act as if there's a difference between us and, and use skin color as a, a, a way to determine this are really the ignorant ones. Because the reality is, if all Africa, all life started in Africa, then we're all related, right? If you want to highlight the fact that maybe I have less melatonin than you because my ancestors moved to colder climates where melatonin wasn't something we needed, but we needed different things to survive. It just is what it is, right? Like I never saw this as being an issue growing up, but apparently on YouTube, this is a, a big important issue that somehow relates to boxing. I don't know how it relates to boxing, but apparently it does because it's brought up fucking every day. To other parts of Asia, Australia, Europe, and the Americas. In time, Homo sapiens would colonize every habitable region on earth, but that would take thousands of years because there was something or someone standing in the way of our progress, another species of human. A species of human that was stronger, faster, and more adaptable to extreme environments. This fearsome and fearless warrior species was the Neanderthal. Dun, dun, dun. Neanderthal. And you know, the funny thing is, a lot of these other tribes, what happened is Homo sapiens and these other tribes ended up breeding and having mixed children, which genetically developed really what we are today, right? One of the reasons why Europeans are called Neanderthals by certain individuals is because we did mix and children were born between the cohabitation of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, right? And obviously this would make you even more able to deal with harsh climates and environments and for your people to succeed, right? And how much did these people succeed? Well, they ended up taking over the world. So apparently succession was very successful. And it's not just Neanderthals. You can look at the Asian uh, Mongoloids and Mongolia uh, as a specific sort of uh, tribal aspect from the Mongoloid, the Asian uh, sort of cross species. And they controlled almost all the world. And Genghis Khan, his DNA is ripe throughout human population because of how much he inter, uh, interspecies with uh, other people and other tribes around the world when he was dominant, right? And still people want to try to use these kind of things as a way to be negative towards others. And I, I just don't get it. Really, I don't. 
Like, what does any of this have to do with Lomachenko fighting Devin Haney, <laughs> right? You know, or, or Wilder fighting Fury. It has nothing to do with any of it. But some people are so focused on pushing this racial narrative that it's a consistent, consistent thing. The Neanderthal was not the dumb, bumbling caveman you were taught in school. They were intelligent, had spoken language. They built large family groups that organized into tribes, that then organized into villages. They conquered fire, they created art, they created music, they created tools. But their specialty was creating weapons. This species of superhuman warriors conquered Europe easily. They crossed the English Channel and conquered Britain. The warm coasts of the Mediterranean, too, were theirs. For 500,000 years, they devoured Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. They were the kings of the world, the ultimate warriors, the apex predator. That's it. So genetically, I come from the monster, the superhuman, the apex predator. Thanks, man. All those times you thought you insulted me, you were really praising me hard, talking about how I am superhuman, stronger, faster, more adaptable, right, than you are. Hmm, thank you. I, I never realized what the compliment you're actually giving me and others. Unlike other human species who ate mostly fruits, seeds, and grains, Neanderthals only ate meat. They were strong enough to take on animals that no other creature would touch. Cave bears, leopards, mammoths, even rhinos. But their favorite prey, their favorite food, was us. Wow. We feasted on you because you were easy prey. Coming out of Africa, slow, weak, and inferior. Hmm. Do you know the names of your great-grandparents? What about the names of their great-grandparents? I can only trace my family back a few generations. Royal families and nobles have records of their ancestors that go back hundreds of years, some over a thousand. The Chinese philosopher Confucius has one of the world's most extensive family trees. Today, Confucius has millions of living descendants. Yeah, so does Bill Chamberlain. <laughs> the documentation of Confucius' family goes back 2,500 years. Even those people are not who they think they are. 2,500 years is nothing. Our story is much older than that. Millions of years older. Seven million years ago, a new primate split off from chimpanzees. This was Silanthropus chidensis. Silanthropus was a new type of species, the first hominin. Hominins include modern humans, extinct human species and all of our immediate ancestors. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, emerged about 300,000 years ago. So what about all the time in between? Were there humans? Sure, lots of them. A million years after Silanthropus was Orwan Tugnensis. Orwan was still very ape-like in appearance. It was about the size of a chimp and had a small brain. But it started experimenting with walking upright. That was a big deal. Walking on two legs instead of four changed everything. Hey, legs are overrated. Well, bipedalism exposes less of the body to the sun, which helps with heat regulation. And walking on two legs instead of four is also much more energy efficient. But the biggest advantage of all, it freed up the hands for carrying objects, food, and tools. Artipithecus or Artie came next. They definitely walked upright. Early you. Now that's the thing yeah. about science and a lot of our history. People love to make these assumptions, these, you know, statements that they make specifically because they think somehow it benefits them as people today, which is so ignorant, right? Because you're missing out on the millions of years of, you know, evolution that, that Homo sapiens have went through and all the people in between that were also part of our development. Right? But of course, you can't be surprised with people that come out with these stupid, asinine type of insults. Historically, people that insulted me on my channel, I never was offended. You can call me a pink cave demon, uh, a Neanderthal, a cave dweller. And my response was, well, at least I owned a cave. 
I mean, your people fucking lived on the savanna, right? Out in the open. So, you know, think about who actually was evolving quicker. I was already looking for fucking, you know, home ownership even back then. So obviously uh, my priorities were fucking set from an early point of view. Uh, but, you know, this is the problem with many of these YouTube guys. They don't really care about boxing. What they want to do is consistently push this hierarchical racial narrative on their channels to try to get other people like themselves to jump on their channel, to jump on the cause that they're pushing, which is we are superior, we are better, we are better than you. And this is ultimately what racism is, right? And, and that's the irony, because the majority of people that do this are the people that cry consistently about racism towards them. Yet they're the perpetuators uh, of most of this racism on YouTube consistently. And you've seen this fucking for a long time, well over 10, 15 years on YouTube already, we've seen it and, and it hasn't died down. It's just become more fundamental to many of these channels. Uh, and it is what it is. It was interesting because that Whitlock video that I talked about the other day, he even sort of expounds on it and talks about how this has really been pushed by the media for a long time now. And, and he's been fighting against it consistently. This anti-white sort of narrative that the media consistently pushes. Yet many of these channels talk about old media being anti-black. Yet that goes against everything that people like Whitlock and you and me have seen over the last 15, 10, 10 to 15 years. I mean, you look at ESPN, it is literally more woke than fucking CNN, literally. And, and that's been an issue on CNN for, or for ESPN for a long time. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse by the day. But let's jump back to Neanderthals. We'll go through many of these people. Organized into tribes, developed simple language, and were able to pass on knowledge, information, and skills to their offspring. The Pidelbergensis branched off two new species, one of those was us, Homo sapiens. The other branch was, well, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, uh, did you just say Lord of the Rings? Yeah. From Hadoborgensis and Floresiensis, they're commonly called hobbits. They were about three and a half feet tall and had large, hairy, flat feet, just like a hobbit. And they lived in the Shire. Uh, no, these hobbits <laughs> live deep in the jungles of Indonesia. Uh, no, you're thinking of Tom Bombadil. No, he lived in the forest. Can I get back to this now? You shall not! I'm just kidding, go ahead. Yes. For over 200,000 years, several different species of humans shared the Earth. Hobbits, Denisovans, Hydroborgensis, Homo erectus, yeah. and quite a few more. But then, about 70,000 years ago, all human species started dying out, one by one. Finally, all species of humans went extinct, except for two. Us and Neanderthals. Today, most Neanderthals are depicted looking very much like we do. A little shorter, a little stockier, maybe they have a larger eyebrow ridge. But for the most part, you'll find picture after picture of cheerful looking Neanderthals. Big smiles, rosy cheeks. But there's evidence that they didn't look human at all. That's where Lord of the Rings comes into play. A new study shows that Neanderthals were real life orcs, and they were terrifying. It's crazy, eh? This is the thing about education, and who knows how much of this is fact-based or not, but it's just interesting whenever you look at these historical sort of docudramas or dramas, uh, and, and just the information that obviously we get. And there's no reason for me to doubt it, but there's no reason for me to overthink it. See, that's the difference between me and some of you channels, because every new information that I hear on a video or a podcast, I'm not gonna take ownership of it, and start perpetuating it as, you know, common truth. You see a lot of these guys talking about how, you know, everybody was historically black, like literally everybody. Shakespeare was black, fucking the Vikings were black. I mean, it's like, Jesus fucking Christ. If everybody was black, how did we end up where we are today? <laughs> like, think about it. If everybody truly was black, then the reality is 
the population today would be black because the majority of the population would have just ended up taking over interbreeding and genetically uh, would have taken over the whole world if there was such a disproportional amount, right? As some people like it to, like to make it out to be. Huge hulking beasts with thick fur, cat-like eyes, and physical strength far greater than any homo sapien. Their bones were much heavier than ours to support their enormous muscular strength. One of the most characteristic features of the Neanderthals is the exaggerated massiveness of their trunk and limb bones. All of the preserved bones suggest a strength seldom attained by modern humans. A healthy Neanderthal male could lift an average NFL linebacker over his head and throw him through the goalposts. See, that's why most of the strongest men in the world happen to be white. Because this Neanderthal gene in Caucasians just uh, helps people be stronger, I suppose, right? Stocky. Their noses were large and broad. Their jaws were designed for eating meat, any meat, even each other's. Neanderthals were smart, organized, and experts at war. Their hunting parties became small armies. In close combat, a Neanderthal could easily overpower five or six modern humans. No other species had a chance. Wherever Neanderthals went, all other human species in the area went extinct. Except for us. We fled. We surrendered our land to the monsters and retreated. But wherever we went, Neanderthals followed. Oh, yeah. Homo sapiens coming out of Africa were chickens. Ran away from confrontation. Hmm. You know... Obviously, I'm just sort of mocking some individuals on YouTube because the reality of the situation is I never claim to be Neanderthal. I never try to utilize their positives and act as if it was part of me as an individual. Because the truth is, I don't need to do that. I don't care. It's irrelevant. It has no bearing on me as an individual. Unlike many of these people that want to act as if the world was controlled and run and dominated by their ancestors. But if that's the case, then ask yourself, why are we where we are today? Because if that was the case, somebody fucking dropped the ball in a big way. But leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Uh, are your ancestors Neanderthal? And does that describe why you have such big teeth and shiny eyes? Thanks for watching. Peace out. And yes, this was not a typical boxing video, but when I saw this, after all the people who've called me a Neanderthal, I thought it was kind of funny, since in this video, I'm a superhuman.